everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you're enjoying your weekend. Today I am continuing my review of Carl Fulves' magic magazine, The Chronicles, and I am specifically looking at issues number 12 to 18. I've hand-picked a series of effects that I think you're gonna like. A little bit of everything, some card magic, some mentalism, a topological effect, even a variation of a Max Maven effect. So I think you guys are gonna like what I have picked out for you guys. As usual, I'm gonna to try to demo the effects for you here. Before we get started, I'm gonna mention that I'm gonna be giving away this issue of the Chronicles, issue number 16, to a lucky winner. To participate, all you have to do is leave me a comment below. And as per usual, I will randomly select one lucky person, and then I will contact you after I announce that you've won next week and I will be sending you this issue of the Chronicles, which is issue number 16. All right, let's get into today's review. Um, the first effect I want to go over is a, an effect by Di Vernon that you can find in the Chronicles, issue number 12. It's called Instant Oil and Water. It is a very easy to perform oil and water routine that doesn't use any difficult sleight of hand, and you can get right into it from a shuffle deck in use. Let's take a look at it now. All right, here's what Di Vernon's instant oil and water looks like. I really like it because you don't have to move quick. It's really easy to perform. You show four red cards, you show four black cards. You explain to the spectator that we're gonna alternate them. So we're gonna start out by putting down a black card, and then a red card, a black card, a red card, a black card, a red card, and finally a black and red card. So they clearly saw you alternating them. Tell them it takes a moment just to wait, and we're gonna deal off those top four cards nice and cleanly here. And you can show them that we've got a red card and another red card, and yeah, two more red cards, which means we've got one, two, three, and four red cards, which means that over here, we should just have as well, one, two, three, and four black cards. Very simple to understand. Of course, the whole thing can be repeated. People are gonna to wanna to see it again, so you show them and say, look, we're gonna take a red card, then a black card, a red card, and then a black card, a red card, a black card, and finally the last red and black card. We've alternated them again, just wait a moment. And here we're just gonna deal them face up so I can show them to you, and you can see that we've got here clearly all the black cards there because here in my hand I've got all the red cards. And that's it. It's really just that simple and quick. All right, so you guys took a look at instant oil and water. And uh, this is a fun little oil and water effect that I've gotten good reactions from. But stay tuned because I'm going to be going over another oil and water routine by the end of this review that you may even like even more. So moving along to the next magazine, issue number 13, we have an effect that's called Red Blues. And this is a variation of Max Maven's Wave, although it is ungimmicked and ungaffed. I did go over this and I did demo this on my review of Max Maven, although I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like from the same demo so you can see, for completeness sake, you can see what it looks like. Let's take a look at it now. It does not use any gaff cards and it's extremely simple to perform. There's no difficult slights. You approach a spectator and you tell them that you have an envelope with four cards in it and one of them is distinctly different from the other ones. You tell them to choose a color, red or black. Let's say that they say red, and then you say, okay, do you want the hearts or do you want the diamonds? Which one do you prefer, hearts or diamonds? Your choice, free choice. Let's say that they said in this case, uh, hearts. So you say, check this out. This is what's really weird is that in this packet, the only card that's face up is this ace of hearts. So I knew you were gonna choose hearts. In fact, it's the only card that has a different color back to it. And if we look at the other cards, the other cards, they're actually all kings. That's it. All right, so that is red blues. And again, like I said before, if you're looking for an ungimmicked or ungaffed wave type effect, then this may be the effect for you. It is a favorite of mine, which is why I mention it here. Moving along to the next issue, issue number 14, we have a monumental effect. I call it that because I've used it so many times over the years, and this is Edward Victor's 11 
card trick. It's very reminiscent of the six card repeat effect, although I think the structure is much better than the usual six card repeat effect. And this is the perfect effect you can go into when somebody just hands you an old raggedy deck of cards and says, show me something, because it doesn't even matter the condition of the cards. The actual move that you have to learn is so simple that you'll never ever get called out on it. And it's so much fun to perform just because of the reactions you're gonna get and the laughs from people. And that, again, goes back to the structure of the routine. Let's take a look at it now. All right, here's the 11 card trick. You have the spectator deal out 11 cards into your hand. You explain to them that you're gonna show them a trick where cards go from one hand to the other, but we need to make sure we have 11 cards. So you tell them we're just gonna count these just to make sure. So you start counting them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You say, I've only got 10 cards. I need 11. So you ask them to give you another card. They're gonna give you another card. And then you say, all right, let's make sure that I've really got 11 cards. So you count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You're like, I've only got 10 cards. I need 11. At this point, the spectator is gonna probably start laughing because it's starting to seem absurd. You ask for another card and you say, Let's just make sure one more time, let's count. So you count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now they're not gonna believe you, so you're gonna hand them the cards and tell them to count them. They're gonna count them slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Unbelievably, you have ten cards. So you tell them, you know what, I got an idea. Give me three more. If you give me three more, now I've got thirteen. And then if I give you back two, I should have now 11. So you say, let's just make sure. So you start counting again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh my God, now you've got 13. So you say, listen, let me give you two back. That should leave me with 11. Let's just try one more time here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh wow, we've got 10 again. So you say, give me one more card. So they give you another card and you go, oh my God, this is crazy. Let's go, let's go nice and slow. You're saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right, we've got eleven cards. So you tell the spectator you want them to deal out six cards into one hand and five in the other. So they're gonna deal out one, two, three, four, five, six. And then over here they're gonna deal one, two, three, four there's no fifth card, which means that you've only got 10 cards again. So you tell them, you know what, you can't do the trick with just 10 cards. And that's what the effect looks like. All right, moving along to the next issue, issue number 15, we have the UCLA move, which is the utility center lift action move. Let's take a quick look at it. Here is the UCLA move or the utility center lift action move. And, um, I'm going to show you actually the idea that's in the Chronicles. After the spectator has shuffled the deck, you're going to take it back and you're going to take out a card sort of as a prediction of sorts. And you're going to say, look, I'm going to go like this until you say stop. Wherever they say stop, you're going to say, all right, you stop me right here. You're going to turn it over. You're going to show them right where they stopped. You're going to take that card and say, look, you stopped me on this black 10, but I put on the table actually a red ace. But if I go like this, now it turns into the other red ace. And that's it, that's what it looks like. It's really simple and easy, but maybe something you wanna use. All right, the next effect I wanted to review for you guys is called Paradox, and you can find that in issue number 18 of the Chronicles. This was put out by Mitsunobu Matsuyama. This is a topological card effect that doesn't use any moves or any sleight of hand because the card does everything for you. Now, I had created a really nice one. I took my time, I made up a really nice one that I have in a plastic case, but I don't remember where I put it. So I wanted to show you guys what it looked like, so I made up another card really quick to show you what it looks like. There is a little bit of arts and crafts if you wanna do this yourself, although I can tell you that it took me like 10 minutes to make this card, so that's how long it will take you to make it. Let's take a look at it, what it looks like right now. All right, here is what Paradox looks like, and I'm putting this on a white sheet just so it's easier to see it. 
Um, and actually, I had a better version of this, but I couldn't find where I had it because it's been a couple of years since I've used it. And so I really quickly made up this one, believe it or not. I made up this card really fast. So it's not perfect, but it will give you a really good idea of what this looks like. So you're going to take out these pieces of card out of like a plastic container is the best place to keep it. So that way it doesn't get ruined. And you're going to tell the spectator that you want them to uh, put together this as a playing card. You want them to put the, put the pieces together like a puzzle. And so what they're going to do is very quickly, since there's only five pieces, it shouldn't take them more than a couple of seconds to figure out where all of the pieces go. And they're going to see uh, very easily that they all fit together to make, obviously, the playing card. This The little tiny piece, of course, is going to go here in the corner. And you're going to have this, which is the playing card so they can see that very clearly that you can make a playing card with those pieces. Now the, the real effect comes into play here though when you turn it over and say that you want them to do the same thing but um, from the other side to make the face and so when they turn it over and they start to do that they're going to see very quickly um, that instead of five pieces to make the card you don't need five pieces. You actually are only going to use, I don't know if I can get this on this piece of paper. It's a little weird, but this is what's funny about this is that you only use four pieces to make the playing card because this little corner that's left over is not even used. So you don't even use this little piece here that's left over to make the playing card. And you could take your time and make this card really nice. I had a really nice one that I made, although I don't know where I put it. That's the problem because I haven't used it in a while. So I made up this one like really fast just so I could show you guys what the effect looks like. It's more of a puzzle than effect, but it's a lot of fun. And it really messes with people because they'll be shocked when suddenly the missing piece doesn't fit anywhere on the front. It only does on the back. So it's really a fun little thing that you can make yourself at home. It's really easy to make. It's not difficult and um, it's a lot of fun. All right, the next effect I wanted to review is called Oil and Water by Stuart Judah. And the reason I mentioned earlier that you might like this more than the other Oil and Water routine is because I think it's a little bit clearer because you're apparently using three uh, red seven or eights and three black seven or eights and the mixing process looks very clear and simple and you end clean which I really like a lot. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, you're going to show the spectator that you've got three black cards that are just sevens and eights. You're going to show them that you've got three red cards that are also just eights and sevens. So you explain here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the black ones. I'm going to put them in the right hand the red ones in the left hand. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate them like this really slowly so that way you can see that we're just alternating the cards. We just wait a moment and naturally now we've got black, black, and black over here, right? Because on this side, of course, we've just got red, red, and red. So you offer to repeat it, except this time you're gonna go even slower. So you say, look, I'm gonna actually show you the cards really slowly so you could see black and red, black and red, black and of course red, okay? So just like before, you're gonna say, look, so now you've got here black, black, and black. So you can see they've already separated themselves out, obviously, and here we've got red, red, and red. Now, for the finale, you say, look, we'll put the red cards up here, right? And then down here, we'll put the black Cards. Now, if I alternate them like this, now we've got a real mess. But if we wait a second, now we've got all the black cards here, and we've got all the red cards here. It's a very, very easy oil and water routine that I think you're going to like. Gets really good reactions. All right, so you guys took a look at the second oil and water routine I wanted to show you guys today. And like I said, I think you probably like this one even more. Although the first one is good too. There's nothing wrong with it. Finally, the last routine I want to review for you guys is an ESP 
card routine, which is perfect if you carry around just like 10 ESP cards and maybe you do like jazz mentalism um, and you want to be able to do another type of effect with it. This is another matching type effect, but it's a little bit different than the usual. Um, and this is called perfect match. Let's take a quick look at it. Here's what perfect match looks like. You're going to bring out your ESP cards and you're going to give them a little mix up in front of the spectator. You're going to say, we're going to try something here in a moment. I want you to just touch any card. So they're going to or pull one out, but don't look at it. They're going to pull one out. And then you're going to say, here's what we're going to do is I'm going to just uh, put a random card on top of it. We'll look at it in a moment, though. Uh, what I want you to do now is this. Take these cards and just give them a cut somewhere. So they cut the pack wherever they want to. You can offer the top card or the bottom card. Again, it doesn't matter whichever one. And then you say, look, we're going to put another random card on top. Don't look at it yet. It'll make more sense in a moment. Um, here, just take another card. So they take another card. And it, just like before, you said, I'm going to just put another card on top of it. Take these cards under the table. They do. You tell them to cut them wherever they want to. Take the next card, turn it face up, put it on the bottom. Take the next card, turn it face up, put it on the bottom. And then take the next card and put it on the bottom. When they can't come out from under the table, you have them spread the cards. They see that the two face up cards in their hands match. The two face down cards in their hand match. And then, of course, when you turn over the ones that are on the table, they all match as well, which is why this is called perfect match. And that's what the effect looks like. It's a great quick ESP packet trick if you're looking for something that you want to perform that will amaze people. All right, so those are the effects I want to go over with you guys. There are a lot of other effects that you're going to find in these magazines, but I can't touch on all of them. So I've only gone over those that I've used myself, gotten good reactions from. And many of those are routines I still go back to from time to time, as you can see why. As usual, if you guys have any questions or concerns about anything, just leave me a comment below. In fact, don't forget to leave a comment below so you can enter my contest for this magazine. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning into this review. I hope that uh, you saw something that you liked here. Um, I'll see you on the next review.